Hello world, this is the Localite podcast coming to you from Bangalore City. Uh, current, uh, right now, uh, we are uh, here at SIAX and I have uh, Nigel Ajay Kumar with me and we are going to speak uh, to him about one of his books that he's written called What is Religion? A Theological Answer. Besides that, there are a number of questions that have been looming in my mind about uh, not only the book about Christianity in India and even in the whole political scenario, the number of things that uh, have been happening just around Christians. Uh, so we're going to speak to Nigel about uh, various things and we'd love to, I mean, if you have any questions about what we have spoken, we'd love to hear from you and uh, do let us know, uh, write to us or go to our uh, podcast website, delocalites.com. And so today we have Nigel and uh, Nigel is a professor at SIAX. And uh, Nigel, why don't you tell us more about yourself? Okay. Um, yeah, my name is Nigel and I teach theology at SIAX, which is a, a particular kind of uh, Christian studies where we focus on doctrines and how to think uh, related to scripture and how do we look at the world uh, from a Christian point of view. That's largely how we would look at theology. Uh, before coming to SIAX, I used to work uh, for Filmfare magazine. Um, and it was at that time when I was working there for three years, I really felt I didn't want to be writing all my life about film stars and uh, celebrities. I mean, as interesting as they are for the world, I, I just felt that I, there was something more that I wanted to do. And so I came to theological studies. And as I started studying here at SIAX itself, I found that, no, this is what I want to do more. I wanted to invest my life in studying the scriptures, studying about other Christians, what they have to say. And I started taking it very seriously. And I said that this, I don't want to just study it, but I want to help teach it. Okay. And, uh, and so that's what led me to take, do my PhD in, uh, in uh, theology. Uh, and then finally, I became a teacher here. So. Okay. Uh, so just about the book, uh, though we're not going to go deep into yeah. it. But uh, you wrote about Indian Christian theology and about this uh, great person called Chen Chaya. Because yeah. Chen Chaya for me, yeah. uh, as I was growing up uh, in the Bible College yeah. where I did my BTH, yeah. this Chen Chaya, Chakraya or the three, yeah. uh, the trio yeah. uh, who started the rethinking group in yeah. Chennai really influenced me. Yeah. And I remember in Bible College, yeah. uh, BTH in yeah. Bangarapet, I was thinking uh, to partner with a friend and maybe ah, yeah, uh, try yeah. to restart this rethinking group. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Tell me a little bit about... Okay. Uh, so I don't know if people already know what this words are, Chen Chai and all that. Okay, so let me just briefly first say about yeah, the book. Sure, this sure. is the book. Uh, so there are no more copies available. You have to ask Saix to print more copies. If uh, you go on Amazon, it's 4,000 rupees. No, no, no. That's the foreign edition. This is the Indian edition, but uh, that's okay. Uh, but um, the book was... Actually, asking the question, what is religion, and okay. uh, what is uh, how do we define religion as Christians? Because mm -hmm. there are many religions, and so as an example, I used an Indian theologian called mm -hmm. Chanchaya, who wrote in the 1940s, 50s, and 60s. So he was writing around the time of the Indian independence movement. Okay. So like him, there were other Indian theologians like Chakraya, who was his brother-in-law, and then there were other people like Atasami, and uh, then eventually Devanandan, and there were many of these Indian Christians who were writing and thinking at the time when the British Raj was going on. Okay. And so, yes, so that's what you meant by the rethinking movement, that there were a few of these Indian Christians who said, no, look, we need to find our identity as different from British Christianity, but we are neither Hindus, or ra rather we are no longer Hindus, but we are not British Christians. So we need our identity as Indian Christians. What does it mean to be an Indian and as a Christian? So they were fighting for independence but they didn't want to align with British religion, but neither did they want to align with Hindu religion. So who are they and how do they define themselves was what the rethinking uh, uh, movement was about. And you're right, it's a very inspiring time. Yeah. Uh, they made a lot of uh, statements that today we will be shocked to think, oh, how could they say that because they are so controversial. At the same time, just as a movement of Indians trying to think of who they are in relation to Jesus mm -hmm. was a very important history okay. uh, of who we are. Okay. Uh, just uh, going back to the uh, the political scenario that we are in, yesterday there were a number of uh, words that were played by uh, 
lot of politicians uh, within our nation and some key parties mentioned about uh, uh, vote for this particular group, uh, especially uh, breaking down on communal lines and uh, uh, I mean basically asking the especially the Hindu group to vote and the other religious group were uh, not part of uh, this whole political scenario and this political party mm. uh, was uh, not favoring, uh, uh, I mean it's it was chaotic uh, just okay. on the news okay. and uh, somehow there seems to be uh, a disconnection with the Indian and the Christian. Okay, I, I, I actually don't know what you're talking about, like I don't know which, I, I guess you have to be careful which what you say now. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, I, there's something that I, I mean, I saw without ask, answering your question directly, okay. well, okay. let me just give you a sense that, uh, see in my book, again going over here, uh, Hinduism has had a very interesting history. It doesn't start as Hinduism as it's understand, understood today. Today's Hinduism is very different from ancient Hinduism and uh, even medieval Hinduism. And so uh, many people will say that there was the idea of Hinduism itself is a construct. Okay. Now it's not for us to say that to other people. Uh, but around uh, 200 years ago, uh, uh, a lot of these, uh, the, the, you, you can call them the Hindus, uh, started under, trying to figure out who they were and they started saying okay what is my identity in relation to Islam and in relation to this British religion called Christianity and they started uh, figuring out who they were and there were two main movements that uh, came around that time this is we are talking about 1800s and one movement was the reform movement uh, in the Hindu religion where they said look the kind of practices that we are having right now like uh, the sati or uh, even the uh, and many other uh, things that they didn't like about their, their Hindu culture. They said, hey, let's learn from Christianity, let's learn from Islam and let's try to become better as Hindus. So this was the reform movement uh, that happened and a lot of people from the Hindus who never became Christians were inspired by Jesus and said uh, that we need to make a change in our own religion, in our own culture mm -hmm. to make it stronger. So Raja Ram Rai was a classic example of that. And th there were many uh, people like that uh, who were starting uh, to try to change Hinduism in relation to the modern era that was happening. While that was happening, there was another movement called the revival movement. What they did was they said, no, 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 we don't need to learn from Christianity and Hindu Islam. We need to go back to our roots and we need to go back to our Vedas or we need to go back to our ancient religion. and and recovered that because in that lies all our answers mm. uh, and so those people uh, started becoming a little bit more aggressive against the foreign influence or against the uh, people around them and they said no we need to go back so for the reformers who said no we need to improve ourselves uh, the revival said yes we need to improve ourselves but we need to improve ourselves not by listening to the contemporary culture but by going back to our ancient culture okay. so the uh, the reformists were called the, uh, the Brahmo Samaj and the revivalists were called the Arya Samaj. And the Arya Samaj has been very influential in, in eventually in the RSS and, uh, and, and the contemporary movements which are very uh, focused on trying to help Hinduism and to help Indian culture. Mm. And I would not look down on them because the revival movement is a very important thing that happened in Hinduism. But you can see what's happening today is that there's a lot of push towards revival and less towards reform okay. in terms of learning from contemporary culture. So a lot of contemporary Hinduism, especially in influenced by the RSS, uh, has focused on, let's go back to our past, okay. our ancient trends. So that's, that's where I would say our, our current parties are also influenced by one or the other. Okay. And you can see that uh, some uh, political parties are influenced more by revival rather than reform. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for answering because I I was uh, trying to understand because somehow I thought they were pushing it upon people. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I think I think parties around the country were struggling with. Yeah, it. yeah. I think the revival movement uh, as a movement is a very important movement, but it has also been politicized. So okay. people have used the revival movement for political gain. That's that's common. I mean, everybody does uh, that, I guess. 
uh, but uh, the the idea of revival is a very important revival. Even Christianity goes through that, Islam goes through that, uh, mm-hmm. has gone through that in history. So Hinduism has gone through that. That's why I think we should be very careful in trying to put down. Uh, we should not be putting down groups like the RSS, and we should not be putting down groups as a as a whole, because what they are trying to do is something very important in culture. Okay. They try to preserve their culture. They're trying to preserve who they are. Okay. They're trying to fight against. Uh, what they feel is un unwarranted. I uh, actually feel sympathetic now. I mean, see, the thing is, these are as people, real okay. people who okay. are trying to preserve their culture, okay. and I think it's very important for a culture to do that. We can't just accept everything. Now, there is also a sense where we need to learn from others, but that's a separate thing. But it's not our job to tell somebody else this is how you should learn. This is not. As cultures, we've always tried to either protect ourselves or grow and learn. From others, okay. and so we learn from our past, or we learn from our present, mm-hmm. and so uh, we will see uh, the best movements probably are the ones that mix a bit of both. Okay, and I, I think there are a lot of lessons for Christianity as well. But that's why I look at contemporary Hinduism and say, okay, I can see an emphasis on revival. That's why they'll say things like, oh, in the past there were television, in the past there was nuclear, in the past there was this. It's we we, we may think about laughing at it, but it's not about. Whether it's true or not, it's the idea is we want to recover the past. The past has our answers. Mm. It's enough for us today, and mm. we we shouldn't get caught up with the present. We shouldn't get caught up with globalization and Americanism, and they might say things like that, and even these foreign influences. Let's go back to our roots, and in that, find a lot of wisdom to help us for our present. Yeah. Hey, thanks, Nigel, for answering that vague question that yeah. I asked you. Yeah. <laughs> so, Indian, Western. And uh, how uh, is the church yeah. been influenced by all this, especially in relation to the book and theology? And yeah, so I think there are lessons in history, and uh, so the lessons in history. Let's go to 1940s, okay. and so the 1940s. In fact, probably late 1930s. Uh, around the late 1930s, uh, Christianity was controlled by the West. I mean, mm-hmm. it was American, British uh, Christianity was all about that. So when they had conferences. They will not invite Indians. They will not invite uh, Africans. They will not invite Chinese. It will mm-hmm. always be a white male-controlled Christianity. Yeah. Uh, so that was how it was common. By the 1930s, late 1930s, a lot of the non-whites started asserting their voice, and Indians were one of them. And mm. and what we find is, for instance, there's one white uh, Christian called Marcus Ward, who's writing. How Indian theology should function. Okay. Uh, so he said, "This is what Indian Christian- Christianity should be like." And he so he writes a whole book about it. And then uh, uh, this theologian, this Indian, he's actually when you say Chinchaya as theologian, he was actually a lawyer. He was not okay. a he was not trained in a seminary. He was not trained in a Bible college. He just came from a Christian a Hindu background. His family became Christian. He became a Christian, and he started thinking about his faith. So as he started reading this work by this Western person called, this is how Indian Christians should be. He wrote a series of articles in a newspaper called The Guardian about actually what Indian Christianity should be, okay. unlike what this guy is saying. He's saying, yeah, yeah, okay, right. There should be something we should learn from him. But he started devising a way of how should Indian Christians be. Okay. And at that point, fundamentally, if you could summarize him in one sentence, Chenchaya said, "We take." Nothing but Jesus as important for us. We should be willing to reject everything like Western Christianity, Western Church, uh, Western practices, and the only thing that is real for us is Jesus, because we have met Jesus. We have not yes. met Christianity. We have met yes. Jesus. Yes. And the problem is that these Christians, and for them, when they meant Christians, there were hardly any Christians in India. But the most of the Christians were there in, in the West, and these soldiers and these missionaries and and. Uh, and all was mixed up the politics and the and the cultures what was like the mission compound christians a uh, mission compound was uh, was actually another kind of christianity in in this but if i was to focus on the yes the idea that we need to change indians to become christians okay. was one mentality that let's say the westerns had they had an idea about what does it mean to be a christian and so let's make them into christian means let's change their culture okay and so a lot of people like chenchaya but chenchaya especially said No, no. Let's rethink everything. Let's say only Jesus, because we love Jesus. Jesus has power. Jesus, uh, through the Holy Spirit, has power. Jesus gives us strength. Jesus gives us life. Now let's focus on Jesus and try to figure out who is Jesus for India, who is Jesus for Indians. 
And so what we find in Chenchaya, what he does is he looks at Jesus and then using his own culture, he uses people like Aurobindo's, uh, uh, Sri Aurobindo's yoga, he uses Gandhi's nationalism and he uses uh, even certain evolutionary theories that are around him, which, are, which do come from the West, but, he, yeah. but, but also very connected to Vivekananda. And so he uses many of these people and he says, look, these Indians, uh, are my own culture, my own brothers and sisters like that are saying so many good things. Like Gandhi, Gandhiji is saying so many good things and Vivekananda is saying so many good things, Aurobindo is saying so many good things. However, what they miss is Jesus. Mm. And they don't really get Jesus. They, they, they get a lot of things right. Like yoga, according to Chinchara, is right. But they don't get Jesus yoga. They don't understand what it means to be like Jesus. They get what it means to build your body. And so what he finds out is, it's like Gandhiji is right. That yes, we need to focus on the nation and we need to focus on one nation. But he uh, misses a Jesus. Yeah. He doesn't realize the place of Jesus for this nation. And as Christians, that's what we need. To bring Jesus back to back to Christianity and not all this church and, and this doctrine or that doctrine and we get confused by all that and we need to just bring Jesus in. So a lot of what Chenchaya did at that time was discover a Christianity that said Jesus only, okay. Jesus and the Holy Spirit yeah. and, and, the, and as a result he made according to contemporary Christians a lot of errors. He rejected the Old Testament, he rejected the church entirely almost and he rejected a lot of things that we would consider important. Sometimes he even criticized the focus on the cross. He said, why do you talk about cross, 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 cross? Uh, uh, Jesus died, died, died. The whole point is Jesus rose again. It should be yeah, resurrection yeah. is the focus. Why do we celebrate Good Friday? We should be celebrating Easter. That's our main uh, celebration. Yeah. So at that, he, he will horrify some Christians today. Yes. yes. And, and so he, he's also referred to as the pious rebel. Yeah, yeah, like that. Uh, but some people won't even put the word pious into him. They will say he's just a rebel. But I find in him, he notice when he's writing during the independence movement, these are people trying to understand who they are as Christians. Mm -hmm. So I really feel Chen Chaya was a, a very interesting person for us to learn from. And not that we have to repeat everything he says, but he stands as a person trying to figure out who is an Indian, who is a Christian. And as a result, we need to define and discover who that is for ourselves. That's, that's what I see that is a good lesson for even contemporary Christians today. What do you think about the church at the moment? I know you're you, I mean, uh, not so much in the background of church, but then eventually when I think about a book like this, uh, will the plane land Oh yeah, the church? See, like, yeah, sorry, my book was written more for an audience for, of academicians, but I have been thinking a lot about the church in terms of what does this mean? And... I would say it means, uh, uh, if I would just simpl simplify it, I would say that most of us have what is called a, a belief in Jesus or a belief in God that just comes from our pastors and our teachers and it's just inside our hearts. Uh, what some scholars call it embedded theology. It's okay. just our beliefs that are inside us, whether we know it or not, whether we, we express it or not, which is, it's already inside. So when somebody says Jesus, we'll say, oh, he's Lord. We haven't really thought about it. That's just what people have said. And we just believe it. And that's an important part of our faith as a church. Mm -hmm. We have to hold on to the faith that was taught by our fathers and mothers. Uh, we must hold on to this faith. But after that, uh, an important part of Christianity is also what you call thinking again. This is an important part of the history of Christianity, where you don't just accept what was taught in the past, where you also think about it for yourself. Is this really true for me? Mm -hmm. Is this really true for my culture? And a lot of people like uh, the ancient Christian believers to even this generation have been thinking again of what does this mean for me. Yeah. So sometimes what our fathers and mothers have taught may not be fully right. So we test it and we try it and we retest it. And this is what we call rethinking. And it's an important part of any Christian's growth where we don't just accept what we are taught in Sunday schools. We also believe it in again where we test it and say, what if it's not true that Jesus is Lord? It's not to doubt, but it's to say, uh, to, to think again, is it really true for me? Mm. And that I feel is important for the church. Because I, uh, I remember when I was working in a church yeah. and uh, I was speaking to one of the youths and I told her that, uh, uh, listen, theology is important because it shapes the way we think. Yeah. And uh, she just brushed me aside and said, Theology is for theologians in 
academic institutions it's not for church members oh yeah yeah theology gets a very bad name that way and i understand that i i, I don't we theologians are the cause of the problem we deserve it i i think the way we have taught theology is really bad so i i i can say that that is partly true but i would say that what i mean about theology theology is that it's not just learning what is in the past but it is also thinking again it is about thinking about your faith and that is what we call the search for god we mm. need to do that ourselves okay. and every generation needs to do that not simply accept blindly what was taught but think again i think and this is where i would say i disagree a little bit with chinchaya no not a little bit in fact fundamentally with chinchaya what he said was only jesus is important and as a christian i would say yes jesus is important but how do you know about jesus you know about jesus because of the bible and so what i have been figuring out is that ultimately it's the bible and jesus that's the most important i would not say only this part of the bible is important i would say the scriptures the holy scriptures are important okay. and jesus is important now let's rethink the way christianity has been explained in america may not be so important for me the may way christianity has been explained in uh, may be helpful may not be helpful the way britishers explain it but as christians in india we really need to go back to the bible we really need to see who jesus is connect with who jesus is the living god we need to be praying to the holy father again we need to be re- re- revived by the holy spirit again we need to be looking at the scriptures through all of this and saying okay lord what does this have to do with india today what does it have to do with my beliefs today and this is what i feel that what chinchaya hint chinchaya hinted at is what we need in our generation mm-hmm. we really need to rethink our faith how much of it is really just because others have taught us and some a lot of it is from the west but what if we just take the holy scriptures and say lord teach me again help me to help me to spend time again and uh, think about what it means for me for our generation uh, as christians in living in india living in africa living in china we really need to rethink what does christianity mean for us okay hey, any any do you have any last words before we close this episode <laughs> last words it is finished like yeah, bottom line <laughs> uh i i mean i there's so much to say uh, i i really feel that uh, or, or you can speak about the future okay the future <laughs> see i uh, i see the thing is and this what i'm saying is only a part of my book and there's a lot more to say and there's a lot more in my current research but i really f- would say there's uh, two things that indian christians need to do is we are not trying to criticize uh so basically don't be quick to criticize hinduism and muslims and, and, and the, our neighbors around you don't be quick to criticize them uh try to understand them try to understand their history and their culture and why they are saying what they are saying when they are when they are celebrating uh, a festival and it's really loud or it's really like uh, like that colorful uh, uh, colorful uh understand why understand why they are celebrating it and uh, don't be afraid of it get to know it uh, and that's something that i would say to indian christians that don't be afraid of your culture okay. because we are it is part of our culture of course we also have our culture we are also different but we should not be afraid of it uh, and we should teach our children to make work with the people around us so don't i think you use the word mission compound yeah. be careful not to protect yourself to such an extent that you cut yourself from your culture okay uh, to understand that there are many good things around your neighbors there are many good things and good people around you and be able to become close to them okay. for and it's, this is not is not simply about uh, it it is not just simply to bring the love of jesus to them which is also important that we must bring the love of jesus we must tell them about jesus that's an important part and that's who we are but it's also just to understand who they are Uh, we don't need to be afraid of the rss we don't need to be afraid of any other government we don't need to be afraid of these are people who really want to do good under using their own understanding they think they're doing good so we need to understand why they think they're doing good and maybe that's why we can have dialogue but at the same time i would say the second thing i would tell indian christians is look know who you are uh, understand your culture understand your faith and know that sometimes you're just doing things because you you've been told to do it maybe your church has told you maybe your uh, somebody else has told you but what if we say only the bible can tell us mm. and we as christians need to start thinking again what the bible tells us and it's not to say that what people have taught us is wrong 
but at least we should think again okay uh, and that i would say is an important thing for indian christians today to do it's not just love your neighbor but try to love god again afresh okay. uh, who is god for me what does the holy scripture say let's try it again let's say that maybe we were taught the wrong things maybe there were some things that were right there were some things that were wrong we need to be careful about that uh, we don't need to get into where and what is right and wrong but just trusting the word of god trusting the holy spirit trusting jesus as our savior and trusting the father that he is actually available to help us this is all part of what we need to uh, employ in faith and go to the scriptures again and say lord what are you teaching us in our generation so that's basically if i would sum up i would say this is what i would like to tell the indian christians today yeah. and thanks. myself yeah yeah well thanks nigel yeah. and uh, thanks for uh, speaking to us about a uh, number of things and uh, pleased about uh, the future as uh, you spoke about it yeah. and uh, my my desire is that uh, christians in india would continue to rethink faith and continue to dialogue with uh, people of other faiths yeah yeah i i think yeah so when you say dialogue with dialogue. people of other faiths i'm just afraid of that because see not everybody wants a dialogue you know not, not everybody wants a dialogue about faith and try, what did jesus say what did, you know i just make friends with them yeah, yeah. i th- i think see dialogue means if somebody gives you sweets you know that is what i mean by dialogue don't say oh i'm a christian i will not take just i will not celebrate yeah. with you just be careful that there are certain things where you have to live you have to take the bus with a person who's a hindu you have to take a bus with a person who's a muslim a sikh that's how we live we go to shops where different cultures are there we live and live and breathe the same air we yes. are part of the same culture that's what it means but what some christians have done is they say okay let's talk about my faith and let's talk about your faith and we remove ourselves from our lives yeah. and we really need to live with one another uh, and whatever that means yes and yes of course in peace and harmony but it's not simply about dialoguing but uh, that's sorry, why i just uh, no, no, no no sorry no. sorry i'm the, i'm sure you meant uh, in something but i'm just a bit nervous live in harmony uh, yes there oh, is a sense so where so many words yeah yeah there no, is let's a, just be friends yeah no, but you know there is a sense where uh, hindus and muslims have rightly criticized their own cultures yeah they have they themselves have said what is right and wrong about their own religions mm-hmm. they know it they don't need others to tell and we can share that we christians have also done a lot of errors for ourselves in the west in our history and so what we do is when we say we want to live as friends we also recognize there are certain weaknesses that we have and it's not necessarily our job to always expose other people's weaknesses but recognize where they themselves recognize their weaknesses and we ourselves the moment we expose their weaknesses and focus on our strengths we are not recognizing our weaknesses yeah. and and i think we need to be humble in the way we bring jesus to one another uh, at least i can say that jesus is perfect because i believe that jesus is perfect so bringing the example of jesus living the example of jesus and rightly responding to one another recognizing that none of us are perfect yeah. but especially that everybody may have done something wrong but there is also grace available there is also forgiveness available from god not from us uh, and god himself brings the message of peace and hope for us all is something that i would love christians to be more confident in that it's not about wrongness but it's about the grace that god can give to all of us yeah so yeah, sorry yeah, yeah, yeah i'll stop now again, i won't say anything once again thank you <laughs> yeah. for that and uh, we, we do run a, a group uh, at our cafe at stars okay. cafe called rethinking christianity oh nice okay where we tend to meet uh, every thursday yeah, yeah. of course the season is going to yeah. start from yeah. uh, june on yes yeah, yeah. and uh, we our desire is that we want to engage yes. with people we yeah. want to speak about it we want yeah. to understand yeah. people in this country yeah. that yeah. we're living yeah. Yeah. and to be global also yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah thank yeah. you once again yeah, for speaking to us yeah. it was yeah. great and uh, finally friends yeah. great and uh, please respond to us i am uh, sangsters bringing this podcast to you yeah. from the delocalized website yeah thank you thanks thanks